So look at the bank here, Jordan. You got this walking pace water, same flow. You can just swing a streamer and cover all what? this water. What's a streamer? A streamer, yeah. And then like, see this gravel bar. So like, you got these two points here. I don't care. And then care. look how it goes over into that dark green water. To work. There's a ledge there, and you just like nymph like a peacock I don't lead, give a like with a back streamer behind it, like. Welcome back, Deep Your View TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. Now, you may remember last month, Fujifilm released a whole pile of new cameras and lenses, and we have our hands on a Fujifilm X-T30 version 2. Now, we're not going to do a full review today because in a lot of ways, it's a very similar camera to the original X-T30, but there are some important upgrades. I do want to tell you about those. However, Fujifilm also has still the excellent X-S10, one of our favorite APS-C cameras, and the price points are very similar between these two cameras. So, do we go X-T30 version 2 or do we go X-S10? I'm going to answer that very important question today. Okay, so let's get into what's actually changed. And starting on the outside of the camera, actually, when you look at the X-T30 version 2, nothing has changed. I mean, I'm even surprised they haven't put a numeral 2 behind X-T30. The only way you can tell this camera is version 2 is by the sticker on the battery door. But something has actually changed. We do have an upgrade physically, the display on the back. Now, this is a articulating display for vertical, you know, waist level or above the head shooting. This is now 1.62 million dot LCD panel, a fair improvement over the original just over a million dot panel on the X-T30. Now the next major upgrade is actually more internal. So they've actually upgraded the RAM in this camera, they've removed some of the bottlenecks in the system and that gives us some very interesting updates. Now one nice update is when it comes to the buffer. We feel that this camera is passing through files to the card faster, but it depends on the situation. So for example, if I'm shooting maximum burst rates, 8 frames per second, the original X-T30 would get about 18 shots before slowing down, and this goes to 23. That's actually not that big an improvement. However, if we go down to 5 frames per second, which is very reasonable if you're shooting family stop, uh, you know, then you're going from the original X-T30's max of about 23 shots to here now at 46, and that is actually a substantial improvement. Regardless, if you're shooting an X-T30 version 2, you're going to be able to shoot longer bursts. Let's give you a little bit of Bow River fly fishing trivia. That island back there is called Christmas Tree Island, and if anybody out there can tell me why it's called Christmas Tree Island, Jordan and I will send you a free Christmas tree. We'll cut it down ourselves. It should get there before Christmas, but the shipping is on you. All right, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, okay, so the original X-T30's autofocusing. The autofocus tracking was still the old system where it had lots of little green squares all over your subject. It was busy, the hit rate wasn't great. So now I'm happy to report that the X-T30 version 2 has the new autofocus tracking like you'd find in the Fujifilm X-T4. Way more intuitive, a tracking box, good hit rate, so that's a welcome improvement. Now, the original X-T30 was missing one of my favorite Fujifilm simulation modes. It was classic nag. I love using it. The X-T30 version 2 has that. It also now has the Eternal Bleach Bypass filter, which I know a lot of you out there really love. Jordan and I think you're crazy. We don't get it, but to each their own. There's also some nice video improvements while we're talking about, you know, Eterna. So, just a couple of minor video upgrades here. First off, the X-T30 original could always shoot F-Log, but it's a very flat, low contrast profile. It can be hard to kind of envision what the result's gonna look like while you're shooting. Now on the X-T30 version two, we have F-Log Assist. Turn it on and you basically get a graded look to your video while you're recording. Just gives you a better idea of what you're gonna end up with. The other nice feature that we have here is now 1080p, 240 frame per second. It's fun, super slow-mo, but at the same time, it's pretty soft off the quality is not great. So overall, the X-T30 version 2 brings a lot of, again, honestly, fairly minor upgrades. I feel like they're just bringing it up to the current technology level, but now we have the Fujifilm X-S10 to compete against it. Let's talk about how those two duel it out. So there we go, X-T30 version 2 versus X-S10. You know, Fujifilm brought a lot to the table with the X-S10. A lot of interesting technology, but even more so, it was a pretty bold departure from their current design strategy. I mean, up to this point, they were making cameras that really harken back to film camera controls. You know, lots of manual dials, shutter speed on the dial. I mean, they look like a retro camera. And so the X-S10 really went more of a DSLR way of styling a camera. 
Now beyond dial controls and the styling, I mean, what about size and weight? Well, they're actually pretty similar. I mean, obviously the XS10 has a bigger grip, but a lot of people prefer that, found that to kind of be a weakness on the smaller XT series. I really don't think you're saving that much space. For me, it was really more that styling. You know, do you go with this newer body design, which has the new AF tracking and Fujifilm simulation modes and such, or do you go with the XT30, the original one, so that you could get that classic styling, even though you're actually missing out on a lot of technology. Well, basically the X-T30 version two now brings us up to parallel as far as technology goes, but there are still some differences I wanna talk about. Now for displays, they basically have the same EVF. Now again, the X-T30 version two has that higher res 1.62 million dot back panel. However, the X-S10's back panel, although just over a million dots, does fully articulate. Now both cameras can shoot a maximum of eight shots per second with mechanical shutter, but as we've talked about, the X-T30 version two has that improved buffer, 23 raw photos in a row without slowing down, whereas in the X-S10, I was back to 18, just like the original X-T30. Now when it comes to video, even though they both have very similar technology, the Fujifilm X-S10 is gonna win for some important reasons. So first off, the X-T30 version two, for some crazy reason, still uses that old 2.5 millimeter jack, which means if you want to attach a microphone, you need to have the 2.5 to 3.5 millimeter adapter, and adapters are annoying. If you want headphones, you still have to use the USB adapter. On the X-S10, we get a 3.5 millimeter mic jack, no adapter needed, and again, I can use USB adapter to do headphones. But even more importantly, although again, they both run very similar video specs, the X-S10 will take way longer before it overheats, and in the video world, that's a huge advantage. The big major feature difference between the two cameras is going to be that the Fujifilm X-S10 has that IBIS, that in-body image stabilization. I think this is such a big advantage because there's so many great Fujifilm lenses, sharp little compact primes, for example, that are wonderful but don't have an optical stabilizer. And then having that IBIS system in the X-S10, that's great for both photo and video. So really in the end, when you look at these two cameras, I think the X-T30 version two does a great job of bringing up this platform in line with the technology of the other Fujifilm cameras. But these cameras are only $100 difference. It's not a big price jump to go to the X-S10 and get those features like IBIS. Although this does have advantages for buffer and higher resolution back panel, I think it's really gonna come down to the styling. If you like that retro look of the dials and just that classic film camera look, then I think the X-T30 version two is still a great camera to look at. For me personally, if I'm thinking with my head as well as my heart, I actually prefer the X-S10. In the end though, I think we should keep this in perspective. The X-T30 version two is a nice gesture from Fujifilm because now I can pick whichever style I like better personally and I don't have to feel like I'm missing out when it comes to technology. I have two great options here and both are gonna serve well. So do leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about these cameras. Please do subscribe, like the channel. We really appreciate that. And uh, let's go fly fishing. No. Okay, uh, I guess we'll see you guys again soon for another episode of Deep Review TV.